Big Republican money donors who would sooner give to Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump? Well, it is not a big theme, but it is something that's been happening a lot lately. And uh, I'm wondering if that, that could be a trend. Media mogul, billionaire GOP donor Stanley Hopper joins us on the phone. A lot of people pay attention to him for good reason. He's a very thoughtful, considerate guy. And I want him to consider what's going on here and whether it's a big deal as he sees it. Stanley, always good to have you. What do you make of this? I mean, when I was reading this, I was shocked to see all the big donations from, from Wall Street, 53% of which have gone to Hillary Clinton. Um, and a fraction, a fraction, less than 1%. Now, I know Donald Trump's been self-funding up until this point to Donald Trump. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me some people vote to, for their own good rather than for the country's good. And, and they're giving money to Hillary because they think she'll be president. Oh, there is that sort of but, crass, you know, shallow a, way to go. But, I mean, what does it say to Donald Trump? I'm a team player, Neil, and I... All my candidates dropped out one by one, and now we have Donald Trump, and I'm a team player, and I'm going to tell you something. Do you want to have Hillary Clinton appoint a new Supreme Court justice, or would you rather have Donald Trump do it? It's a really easy answer for me. We're team players. We stick with the team, and we don't take the ball and go home because the game didn't end the way we wanted it. So, Stanley, when you hear that Paul Ryan hasn't made up his mind on Donald Trump, when you hear that no one in the Bush family is even going to bother going to the convention, let alone support <clears throat> Donald Trump, when you hear Mitt Romney is aggressively seeking out a third-party alternative to Donald Trump, what do you think of all that? Well, I'm very disappointed. I mean, Mitt, Ro Mitt Romney was a terrible candidate, didn't understand how to reach the common person, and I'm disappointed in the Bushes because it didn't go their way, so they're going to take the ball and go home. Sorry, did I approve of all that Donald Trump did or what he said? No. But he's a candidate, and it'll be a heck of a lot better than Hillary Clinton. You know, one thing, Stanley, that he mentioned. I'm in the sink. I hear you. One thing that he mentioned, it did make sense that he went ahead and agreed to this pledge, not to bolt from the party. Of course, we'd never know whether he would have stuck to that if he had lost, but he did agree to it. And now the very candidates who were ripping him a new one, uh, several of them have bolted from that pledge. What do you make of that? I think it's terrible. You give your word, you keep your word. What about those who say he is pivoting more than we ever did? He, he is already changing his view on taxes, on refinancing government debt, which they say would be that amount to, to, to you know, default. Um, that on the minimum wage, he too is shifting positions. He's not even waiting for the convention to do it. So they say he's not even a true conservative. Baloney. You want to elaborate on that, Stanley? Or? Yeah, because, you know, if, if we go on and say a general has a question, do we bomb or don't we bomb? Well, you know, when you have to make a decision, then you rethink things, and, and you're going to hear from a lot of people. And I don't think Trump's a fool. He's proven he's a winner. And although he wasn't my favorite candidate, I think he will moderate a lot of his views. And I think he's still our best choice. And if, you're, and if you leave him, you're going to have Hillary as president. Simple as that. So those who say they'll seek out a third-party candidate um, are only dooming the party in, in, in so doing, right? That's what I think. You yeah. want to elect Hillary, then go for a third candidate. Um, you said you, you'd much sooner trust to Donald Trump, paraphrasing here, making those Supreme Court choices than Hillary. Um, I, I was hearing from some of these folks down there <laughs> say, given his recent pivots, we're not quite sure what kind of people he would appoint to the Supreme Court. Well, I'm a lot more sure of him than I am of Hillary Clinton. There is that. Uh, Stanley, what do you think of Republicans in this disarray before the convention? And we've already heard Paul Ryan's office say, look, after their powwow Thursday, if Donald Trump decides he doesn't want the speaker acting as chair of the Republican uh, National Convention, he'll, he'll, he won't do it. He'll step down. Uh, what, are, what are the odds of that? Well, I don't know what the odds are. We had a meeting this morning here in Minnesota. What do we do about Trump and our, and our candidates for the state legislature? And my suggestion and everybody agreed was, let's cool off and wait and see what happens. These people aren't stupid. Uh, Trump's not stupid. The Republican Party's not stupid. Let's see how they realign things and what happens in a couple of months. It's, it's stupid to jump off the wall this early. Um, ne yet many are. And, and, and Donald Trump, who had said he would self-fund his whole campaign, is not applying that to the general election. That's his vote. But do you think that will hurt him, that his message was, I'm paying for this whole enchilada? And now there are going to be a lot of folks, maybe like you, who will be helping him out. 
I will help them out. And anybody who wants to see sensible government and, and get away from the Obama message better get on board, whether they love uh, Trump or not. All right. Even if it Destroy. makes Donald Trump look like he's backing away from something he promised not to be beholden to anyone. Well, I think that's true of Trump. He doesn't have to be beholden to anyone. But I think he'll listen to reasonable people. Do you think he can raise the amount of money he would need in time? Because all of this is happening so late in the game. I would hope so. You sound like you have your doubts. Well, I don't have doubts because anybody who makes a prediction is a fool. Because who knows? <laughs> but I think as time goes by, people are going to realize we have two choices. Either Donald Trump, who may not be our favorite choice, or Hillary Clinton, who's our worst choice. It's as simple as that. Do you think this all comes, this is my crack about the family, and you're, you're, please shoot it down if you want, because it's just a, a crack butt theory. I think what hurt Donald Trump weren't his positions, it was his language. It was his little Marco stuff, Jeb Low Energy Bush, uh, you, you know the drill, that all this, this, these personal insults, that's what's not sticking well with these folks. And had he not, had he dialed that back maybe sooner, it's too late now to say, well, it's forgiven. And, and they're having a tough time with that. What are you saying? I didn't like I didn't like the way he comported himself either. I think it was pretty disgusting, and it sent a wrong message to our kids. But the bottom line is, do we like him or don't we like him? Is beside the point. The question is, who's going to do the best job for America? And I think Donald Trump. Stanley, finally, I'm not, I'm sure you're familiar with these protests going on in Chicago. They're supposed to spread on what they're calling Moral Monday, arguing that. Uh, the, the poor, the middle class are getting screwed by rich guys and that they want the rich to pay a lot more taxes, $23 billion more in taxes, uh, to, to, to help them out. And that this is part of the scene we've seen play out across the country, but that it's not a good time to be rich, uh, not a good time to say that's the American way, especially when Barack Obama echoed again over the weekend at a graduation speech at Howard University that a lot of the rich just got lucky that I guess you got lucky. What do you think of that? I think when we built the direct broadcast satellite business, we didn't get lucky. We bet the whole, everything we owned on it, and that's what entrepreneurs do. And entrepreneurs create jobs, and banks create jobs, and all this nonsense about the rich, it has to be stopped because it's the so-called rich who invest the money, take the risk, and provide jobs and opportunity. Stanley Hubbard, thank you for taking the time. Hubbard Broadcasting CEO created that out of nothing. Very big uh, Republican donor right now. And true to his beliefs, will accept Donald Trump, maybe holding his nose, but saying it beats the alternative. You don't hear that many who are that frank and that direct. That's why we thought we'd share his comments with you.